So when you're beginning to understand um, discounting, some of the graphs in various te textbooks can be a little bit confusing. So sometimes they're presented like we see on the left here, where the graph starts high and then smoothly uh, decreases. In other um, pictures, what you might see is the opposite, where the graph starts quite low and then increases. So this video will quickly describe how this makes complete sense, in fact. So what we have on the left here is what we call our discount function. This particular one is an example of the exponential discount function, and there are many others that you could possibly look at. But many discount functions will essentially describe the proposed way that um, the value of a reward decreases um, as time progresses, as the delay increases. So what we can see here is that with exponential discounting, if you were to receive a reward immediately after a delay of zero, it would um, essentially be discounted, um, it would have its full value, so you'd multiply this reward by, by one. As time goes on, however, your, the curve is going down, which is saying that you're discounting more. So let's say um, for this particular curve, after about 200 days, we are saying that um, the value of a, re a reward that you had to wait for would be worth um, half of its present value. So just to recap, the discount function describes the proposed way that the subjective value of a reward decreases with the time delay. Now this is quite good because this is um, effectively the same uh, regardless of what particular context, what particular um, choices you're looking at. And so this brings us to the kind of diagram that we have on the right hand side. So let's say you are faced with a particular problem. So in this case what we have is a sooner reward which happens after about six months and it's worth uh, 50. So this could be $50, 50 pounds, 50 hamburgers. Now th that corresponds to this dot here. So here we go, 180 days, it's worth 50. Pa 50. We also have a later reward and this is worth double the amount, except we also now have to wait um, one year rather than six months. And so these two points here represent the uh, two options that we have to choose between. So if you were trying to explain which option a person should choose with a discount function, the idea is that you work backwards from um, in a year's time, if I were to receive you know, 100 pounds, it would have its full value. But as you work uh, more towards the, the present moment, what we're saying is the delay has gone up. At this particular point, I have to wait an entire year, and so I'm discounting it by uh, approximately, um, I'm discounting it by 70% roughly. So the discount function are essentially reversed and kind of overlaid upon the particular rewards. So we've got the, the equation here. So the subjective value at any delay from now for a given reward size, and this is my discounting parameter, is given by the discount fraction that we've seen over here on the left, but multiplied by um, the reward. And so this allows us to make predictions about what people would choose. So in this particular example, at all points in time, 
if someone was discounting according to this discount function, they would always choose um, the delayed reward. So you should have a look at some of the other videos where I show um, how to change these things and the other kind of predicted choices that people might make. So hopefully that's cleared up why you might see discount functions drawn in seemingly two opposite ways.